I don't have slides. I'm, I'm going to reflect and am hoping to share my thoughts with you. So part of the work that I get to do at the University of Manitoba is an HIV physician um, in Winnipeg. And so I'm going to talk about some of what I see as the key challenges, what I think we need to be doing, and then some of the gaps from a clinical perspective. In Manitoba, our care program is centered between two clinical sites, so a hospital-based site, a tertiary care hospital, and a community site. And we're located in Winnipeg, but we provide care to all Manitobans living with HIV, regardless of where they are. And I think that we face a number of challenges at a lot of different levels in the, in the provision of care, and they've been touched on already by, by my panelists, by my co-panelists. And I think that some of those challenges relate to the fact that we tend to function in vertical silos, and you've heard that this morning. And it's true from a care perspective, but it's also true from other perspectives as well. And I think that we need to think about how we can begin to integrate, and, and that's been raised this morning, both from the speakers as well as from um, the other panelists. So integration at a number of dev different levels. So integration with public health at a regional and provincial level, integration for, with First Nation and Inuit health, better connection to community, so we have a really good sense of what the community's needs are and from a care perspective and how we need to be um, providing support to the communities to support those individuals. Integration with prevention programs, I think as we think about the treatment cascade, we really need to be recognizing that we need to come together with prevention so that we can make sure that we're that step back. So from the care perspective, we're not just looking at what's happening when we get people linked to care, but what's happening upstream of that, of that step. And then integration with other care, care providers and care programs. So we've heard about the importance for addictions, mental health, and social programs. Our patients have so many competing priorities that we can't be just thinking about their HIV care. We really need to be thinking about it from a full program perspective. I think that we're starting to do this at a regional level in Winnipeg, and Dr. Casper, who's here today, who's the director of the program, has been having a lot of discussions at the regional level as well as the provincial level to try to move these things forward. And I think it's been quite successful so far, but I think we need to do a lot more. So I think, as you heard this morning from Jamie and Zevgi and David, that we have to be looking outside of our city to have a more detailed understanding of what's happening in terms of the HIV epidemic geomapping hotspot so that we can think about what we need to do from a resource allocation perspective. I think we also have to be thinking about how we can support testing efforts to get people linked into care much earlier. So we see too often that there have been missed opportunities for earlier diagnoses and linkage to care and that people are coming into care too late. So again, if we think about the treatment cascade, what do we need to do to take a step back and to look further upstream? And I think we have to think about, um, think outside the box about service delivery and the models of service delivery. So how do we engage with people in communities? What types of support are required to do so? And who needs to be involved in have, making those decisions and implementing those care models? But I think currently we have a number of evidence gaps in order to try to accomplish those things. And I'm hoping that the next panel that's going to talk about solution will try to come up with some answers and solutions to try some of these questions. So I think we face gaps in our understanding of what else is happening across Canada. So there are a lot of really good programs out there, but we don't really have a good mechanism for sharing our understanding and our knowledge of what those different programs are. And I think we also don't have the tools to think about what we need to do in order to adapt those programs to our needs. And we heard about the importance of context this morning. I think that there are also gaps from an evidence Base, and, and, and that's been raised this morning as well. So we don't have population-based data platforms that bring in all aspects of the cascade. So bringing in information related to surveillance and clinical care and other programs. I think additionally that there are gaps in the funding to support programs in which we can then embed the research to address those types of questions. And then finally, with capacity building. So we don't, and you've heard from Sevgi and Jamie as well, about the need for capacity building and training. I think that lots of programs are really interested in thinking about program science, but may not necessarily have the, the ability or the current, the current capacity to do so. And so having training programs where we can train scientists that can work embedded within programs, I think are really important as a mechanism to try to address some of these questions. Thank you.